Hello, Dennis Howard is my name. I'm a vet with Munster Bovine. We're now in early June, and I suppose, given the situation this year, maybe some people haven't got to do a milk recording yet. Some people are about to start milk recording and haven't started, and now they're wondering whether they should start at all. So I suppose in this video, I'm gonna bring you through six big reasons why you should milk record, um, and why it's not too late. And I suppose it's June, so you can get do one recording in June, do another one in August, and then maybe do two milk recordings six weeks apart before dry off. You get your four milk recordings done, and you build up a load of information. So the six big reasons then. I suppose one is to pick up your persistent infections. So what are persistent infections? They're cows that have a high, had a high cell count in the last two or more milk recordings. Um, the big thing about the persistent infections for me is that depending on how long they're going on, these cows may not actually be, be treatable. So first thing, the milk recording will find out the cow, uses California milk test, then the CMT will find the quarter and take action in that quarter. One very good thing to do is possibly dry a quarter if the cow is suitable, and it'll take the quarter out of the tank and it'll stop the spread to other cows. Number two then is your recent infections. So these are cows, as the name suggests, that they, they've got infected recently. And the big difference with these cows compared to persistent infections is that these cows are often very treatable, especially young cows or first calvers um, that have picked up a new infection or picked up a recent infection, they're very treatable. So again, use your CMT, your California milk test, find the quarter um, and actually treat these cows. And there's two big reasons to treat. One is that you'll actually cure her and stop her becoming persistently infected. And then when you cure her, she's, um, she's not going to be spreading it to other cows in the herd. And the other thing for both these, the persistent and the recent, is to implement some kind of controls in the parlour, whether it's dipping the clusters after milking uh, or milking them last, uh, to stop the spread from these cows. Next point then, point number three, culture and sensitivity. So I'd say from now on, for clinical mastitis, so any cow with clots, take a sample of them, take the, uh, take the date, the cow, the cow ID and the quarter that was wrong. And another very useful thing is those recent infected cows that I was talking about. Uh, when you identify the quarter, actually take a sample from, from that quarter and freeze that as well. Uh, mark it the same way, identify it that you actually diagnose it with the CMT. And you can send all these off then. If you have five or six samples together, carry them into your vet and send them off and you get fantastic information back as regards the bacteria involved and the best antibiotic to use. So then you've gone and treated your recent inf infections and point number four then is your response to treatment. So at your milk, next milk recording, you can see the cows you treated. Have they responded or are they still high? So if they're still high, they, they go into our persistent infected category. Um, but if they've cured, you know, it means that the treatment that you use has worked, which is a re really positive information to know. So there are two key bits of information then as regards treatment. One is the response to treatment. The other is the cultural sensitivity. And if you sit down with your vet, these really is fantastic information on deciding on the best treatment and the best uh, choice of antibiotics to treat cases of mastitis in your herd. Number five then, is later on in the year, is dry off decisions. So as you build up your bank of information then with each milk recording, you're gonna get a lot of information as regards the production of the individual cows. Um, and this is really key as time goes on in the year, especially maybe if you're caught for cubicle space, um, or cut for feed or whatever and you can actually think about drying off cows early uh, and dry off the poor cows. And if you look at the milk management report there's a lovely colour coded report there uh, that pick out your poorest performing cows. So these are the red cows, the cows that are not actually meeting their cost of production. In other words they're passengers. The other thing then is you've built up a nice history for each cow on SCC. So you have four recordings done at this stage before dry off and these, that information is critical for your dry off decisions as regard SCC. So can they be cured at all? Are they persistent chronic cows that we spoke about that can't be cured, that should be culled? Maybe they've just been recently infected and they have a good chance to cure over the dry period, but they might need a long dry period and a long acting tube. Or maybe they're not so bad at all, they still need a dry cow antibiotic, but just a normal dry period and a standard tube. And then if you're in the, the scenario maybe where your herd is suitable for selective dry cow therapy, you can pick out the cows in that scenario, the cows that are actually suitable for just a sealer only. Then, I suppose, next spring then, you say you've done your four milk recordings, next spring, if you could try and do an early milk recording, 
you can even make more use of the milk recordings you've done this year. So there's a fantastic report there that comes out if you milk record within 60 days of calving next year, the cell check report, and there's a part there, the uh, performance over the dry period. And this is really fantastic information. You get your new infection rate in cows, your new infection rate in heifers, and your cure rate over the dry period. So if you have a high new infection rate, is it down to um, hygiene, cubital space, or maybe your dry off technique, and then if you have a bad or a low uh, cure rate, are you using the wrong antibiotic, or maybe you're trying to treat cows that can't be cured. So there's loads of information to be got, and my big message today is June is not too late to start milk recording. So talk to your recorder, talk to the office. Um, all our recorders now, they're, they're wearing PPE. Uh, there's a list of protocols there to make the whole process as safe as possible.